Ronan and Sean, you're welcome to the studio of Highland Radio to look forward to, to the big event next week. Thank you. Thank you. I suppose, uh, first of all, Ronan, we'll start with you because you came very, very close to one on a stage in a previous RAS. That's now five years ago, 2012. Um, what was it like on that occasion, I suppose, first of all, for you, for you to be leading uh, a stage of the RAS in, in, in your home county? It didn't work out at the end for you at the end of the stage, but uh, it was a big day in your career. Uh, it definitely was. You know, it's. Uh, I think uh, the stories. Uh, everybody's heard them at this stage and you know it was a big day out for myself unfortunately it didn't work out how you would want it to but uh, that's sport like there's no there's no gifts or anything um, you wouldn't you wouldn't expect anybody to to help you want to race or allow you to want to race just because coming into your home county um, it would have been nice it would have been a fairy tale to finish it off but you know as I say there's no gifts so it yeah. didn't work out that day it, it given me you know in some ways it was you know one of the worst things ever happened in a bike at the same time it was one not the best thing and obviously but it gave me I remember that summer the drive and the determination I had just to, you know, dig in and, you know, prepare them for the rest of the season. Um, really, really drove me on. Like I was at home for uh the month of July that that uh, summer and it, it just gave me that much determination. I ended up getting into that good a condition that I was selected to go to the Elite World Championships for the Irish team yeah. and all, like and that was the highlight of my career. Uh, it also gave me great form for the Tour of Britain that year um, and although I was always driven and determined and trained well I don't know if I would have went as deep that that year hadn't it been for the disappointment of Bondorn yeah. but at the same time then it kind of got into that winter it was always playing in the back of my mind and for 2013 season I, I wanted to do everything I could to try and win a stage and ended up doing too much and overcooking it and overtraining and getting ill and losing too much weight and all sorts like so I had it definitely had pro, um, pluses and negatives to to my yeah. career since then. Yeah. You know, well, we'll talk about later about possibly winning a stage in two thousand and seventeen. Uh, Sean, it's, it's going to be an exciting week for you. Um, we know that the Ronan here is part of, of of a team. You've created a team over the course of the last number of months when it was announced that it was coming to, to Donegal because it's, it's your home patch and, and you wanted to do it. How big uh, a task has it been to create Donegal Voodoo performance and, and put the whole package together just to get in the road next week? Well, uh, at the start, you know, it was, I suppose it was hard at the start, but when, when we got the feeders out there and a lot of businesses and a lot of local help has come on board and I can you know when the route came out, uh, Sean Stewart, posted it to me, he said, are you up for it? And I looked at it and I thought, listen, when it's coming to the home county again, we're going to have to give it another go. Like, But we're there with a week to go. We're ready. Well, I don't know if we're ready. We might. We're re- we have a team, aren't we? But yeah. we'll see how it goes. And it's a Donegal team. Now, you're the, the sole Donegal rider on the team. You brought in a couple of guys yeah. from, from from Dublin. But it's very much uh, in the background. The foundations is, is all Donegal. Yeah, it's all Donegal based. It's like, you know, I mean, we all our crews Donegal. Jason Black has come up with the kit. Um, Randall over there has come up with the cars. And, like, you know, Kieran O'Donnell, Jason McHugh, Jordan McGinley. Brian, Mc, uh, Brian McBride is a physio so it's all Donegal based where we thought we were going to have a Donegal team at the time but it didn't work out that way because Ronan had been selected to Red Freckle Blue and there's two character brothers from Donegal Town that we were hoping was going to be on the team and likes of Roy Devlin and Mark McClure and Mark McCannon that had done it before but things have happened and injuries and, and work commitment and they couldn't do it but I, I've been driving myself to get to the start line and uh, we're there and hopefully things will go well. What's your own personal conditioning like compared to 2012? Because you competed five years ago as well. Where are you now compared to where you were then? I don't know. I suppose I'm wiser to it now. Like I've done a lot of more racing over the years. Back then we were told that we weren't able to do it. In 2012 we weren't fit enough to do it. And Philip was home one year and we were doing a talk out in Garden Lake and we asked him was it possible for a county rider to do the race and he said it was. And we were supposed to talk with Ronan as well, asking was it possible and he was giving us a few tips about it. So am I fit enough for it? I think I am. Um, I've done a few big races uh, recently, the Shea Elliott and the Two of the Morns and I've got around them okay. I've finished in the bunch having been dropped out of the bunch so I think I'm, I'm fit enough but I'm more wiser to what it's like so hopefully my craft and my experience will get me around it again yeah. and, and for you it's, it's, I suppose it's going to be more of a, a personal achievement to be just involved in this race because this is huge for, for cycling in, in Ireland and when we look at 
the UCI teams uh, under that banner that are going to come. We spoke about it beforehand. Like Team Wiggins is coming. Yeah. That's just one example. You have, of course, the, the the Ireland team here as well. So to be part of that and uh, to get to the finish will be a huge achievement, Joe. Uh, it'll be a huge achievement to get to the finish. Like as I say, uh, lining up against Team Wiggins and lining up like Acre Blue or you know all them teams. It's to me is like a a mini tour to France. Like you know, I mean, you don't get every day to race against them boys. You know and. Hopefully we're going to set up a platform for younger riders coming through, like at the minute, young juniors in Donegal and over all over Ireland, their standards so high. And you know, you have, is it Mark Dowling? No, mm. uh, the world was track champion. Oh, Mark Downey. And Mark Downey's coming to do it, you know. Mm. To, 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 to line up against them boys is going to be a good pleasure. Yeah. Ronan, you're, it's a total different contrast for you compared to Sean's situation because Sean's sort of building a team and, and getting as many volunteers together so that Donegal can have a team in this but you're part of Aqua Blue there's a, a a strong foundation there there's a system there's a backup team very much run more professionally so does what's your prep been like for, for this year's Ross? Well the, part of the reason I'm even on that team is you know to allow myself not to have the stresses of setting up a team like that like I was uh, a member of Foyle Cycling Club for the last uh, couple of years and this year the opportunity came to go to Aqua Blue and it was a hard decision to make because I didn't really want to leave Foyle but part of the reason was that I just wanted to give absolutely everything to this Ross and I wanted to not look back and say if I had I just had a bit less pressure there a bit less stress there or a bit more recovery time it might have might have worked out so I, don't, I didn't want to give myself any excuses I've been my training has been 100% um, I couldn't you know I'm not pro anymore I'm not full time anymore I, I have a full time job now and what I've done outside of work I, I couldn't have done any more I couldn't have done any better um, the whole year has been gauged or guided towards the Ross so the results I've had so far have all been bonuses really I've just sacrificed everything else to try and go into the Ross as, as good as I can um, the last the last few weeks now, any time I've gone out, I'm taking, you know, the, I'm sure everybody into cycling's heard of Strava. I'm, you know, I'm doing my best times on certain segments on Strava and doing my best times on climbs that would test myself, like the likes of my more gap. I've gone up it quicker than I have done, even in the Ross previously. I've gone up Grania's gap, different climbs, you know, a lot faster than, than I have done for, for years now. So I don't think... Um, maybe the same situation. I'm not exactly at the high level I was in 2012. Um, like my power numbers are maybe not just exactly as high or my weight maybe not as low but all round kind of again you, using experience that I've gained since then and that I think all around I'm, I'm a better rider now um, I'm kind of I got into the known as well that it might be my last chance to get a, a you know a stage one end on a goal or something mm-hmm. so um, that that alone you know, will will help me. Uh, what what sort of scenario of play would need to, I suppose, fall into place or or run out of if you are to be a contender for for a stage one? Given what you're just after telling us that maybe you feel you're not to where you were in 2012. Uh, well, hopefully nobody watches this video or listens to this interview and, <laughs> and just doesn't realise that I'm in good shape. You know, um, no, it's the same for pretty much every county rider. We're we're kind of playing on the fact that maybe the international teams come and underestimate us. Now, the Aqua Blue jersey maybe isn't the best jersey to be, to be underestimated because it's associated with the team that rides or, or has got an invite to the, to the Vuelta España and that. Um, but still, no, they'll quickly realise that we're not that Aqua Blue team, we're the feeder team. And hopefully then you just get a bit of leeway, you know, and you're allowed into a breakaway or if it's all together and you attack with a couple of kilometres coming into the finish that they just say, well, that boy's not going to be strong enough, he'll come back underestimating us just because you know we're not international riders yeah. um, and that, I think that's the best way for, for county riders to get you know big results myself personally I'm not a sprinter I haven't got that you know kick at the finish so I'm unlikely to get up and, and bunch sprints so realistically speaking you know that, that long breakaway or late breakaway is probably the best chance of getting, getting up there you know yeah. How I know technology develops you see it in motorsport but it's also in the cycling world mm-hmm. we've got this bike beside us uh, that you're going to use yes. uh, on, on, on the RAS and you've been training hard on it. What makes this bike so special, Ronan? Well, it is the latest technology, but at the same time, it's kind of gone back to, to not the basics, but back in time, we bit and that it's a bike that's custom made for myself. You know, every bike I've had from Trek to Specialized to Dolan to Planet X's to Panarello's, they're all off the peg. You know, the size that the the top level world champions and professionals will be getting to be the same size that the customer buys in the shop. This one is made exactly the way I wanted it. So everything from the length of each tube 
to the angle of each tube to the stuffness ratio of the head tubes and the the rear triangle and that uh, absolutely everything is custom custom made so 51 bikes came to me at the start of the year and says what would you like or what do you think would give you the best chance i basically said to them that i wanted the lightest and stuffest bike i ever had to be the most comfortable bike I've ever ridden and they wanted it to be like basically accelerate like nothing i've ever had before and they've they've managed to put it all together like and then the paint job is inspired by another Ronan McLaughlin, the photographer from, uh, he has a picture of Malin Head and the Northern Lights above Malin Head and um, that's where we, the inspiration for the paint job came from. Yeah, and some of the big names in Irish cyclones on it, Roach, Killage. There's uh, um, a still a wee bit uneasy about that but that's for more motivation, like it's all yeah. Irish winners of the Ross, I don't think I'm going to join the name of actual overall winners yeah. or join the list of overall winners but um, you know, to have some of those names sitting there, you have Stephen Roach, you have Kieran Power, Stephen Gallagher, um, some massive names on there, like, and you know, every little helps. Like, so is this the best bike that, that you've ever taken under a competition race? I, I think it's the best bike for me without a shadow of a doubt because it fits me. Every bike I've had previously was either too short on top or too high on top or whatever. Um, for me personally speaking, this is. I got on it last week and it just straight away it was like oh my god I should have one of these years ago yeah. so but then again they weren't they weren't available years ago they are just they are just new to the, to the market there and it's it's working for me yeah. so far let's talk about stages then uh, nearly 500 kilometers is going to be based in Donegal we're going to flat pieces in Donegal there's a lot of hills in there as as, as we, as no, we no, know no flat as, as, as we know no the flat. county well but Bundoran Buncrana Dunlo and Donegal Town are all are all stage finishes. What's going to make Donegal so special this year and, and the Ross and what's going to be such a huge contributive factor and, and who's going to win this is going to have a have a, have a big say in it. There are stages that you know well Sean, mm-hmm. looking forward to them? Looking forward to them, you know, I suppose looking forward to them because we kind of know them and we know mm. where to maybe move up in the bunch, you know, because in, in bike racing if you're you're too far back and in the bottom of a climb, it's very, very rare that you'll be shelled out the back, so we know them very well, myself and Ronan and, and the boys that's on the team that have been wrecking them, so we'll be able to move up hopefully and get well well placed in the bunch before we hit the bottom of the climbs. You know, it's not going to be easy for the likes of myself and maybe other smaller county riders, but the likes of running them, like they'll be moving up because they'll know them really well and they'll know where the attacks are going to be placed. You know, the likes of Memore and Glen Gash and, and around Carrick and Kilcar. Yeah. It's not no place for the faint hearted. I think it's the I think it's the Wednesday stage that there's three climbs towards then before you go into Bunkrana yeah. with Memore being the last one of them. If I'm right, like that's serious stuff on a bike, sort of. That lo- last forty kilometers from when we first go through Bunkrana until we get back to Bunkrana for the finish, uh, it could be the hardest forty k of the whole the whole race, like, and it could mm-hmm. actually decide the whole race. Um, we, you have Glen Gash on stage uh, six, but it comes very early in the stage. It might be more just of a whittling down process on Glen Gash rather than actually a deciding factor for the race, like my more could be. Um, but like I, I wrecked stage five there a few weeks ago from from Bunkrana to Dunlow, and you know you've got the the main road from Bunkrana to Larry Kenny, which probably everybody knows. But from the second you uh, turn out of Milford, it's small roads all day up and down, left and right, all along the coast. If it's if it's a morning like this morning, where there's wind and rain, mm. that could be on paper exactly. that looks like one of the easier stages, but yeah. it could really be a decisive mm-hmm. stage if if it is like that. Yeah, how how will these stages affect some of the teams that we mentioned earlier on at the start because there's some of the big names and and cycling that, that are going to be coming here to to the county and how are these stages going to impact these guys or well, is it the sort of thing that they like to be challenged on definitely you know you, you have uh, i think any teams coming this year will bring climbers their best climbers mm-hmm. to kind of they'll have looked at the route beforehand on the gps profiles and all there that we have and they'll see that it is a hilly ross um so they'll bring riders to suit that kind of terrain um, but then again, you know, Irish or the Irish riders knowing the roads it will be an advantage. And um, as I said at the at the launch of the race, like it's it's all very well been, you know, one of the best climbers going up a more gap. But if you happen to meet a sheep coming down the other side, it could be <laughs> could be a whole different story, you know. And if they're not, like, that's actually one of the scary things for me for the week is that I know coming down that straight side of a more for the descent that if you got to the top and you don't know it, it just looks yeah. like a straight road. You go down under K and R. But for me and Sean, knowing it and knowing how bad the surface is and knowing that there is sheep everywhere and yeah, yeah, it's, it's, bumpy. Uh, uh, yeah. it's not just as straightforward as it mm, looks. And yeah. I'm going to just touch on rallying. Bruce Sebastian Loeb came here in 07, he was the world champion mm. and it took him over a day 
just to get used, used to, to the road. Donegal stages. Is that similar in, in cycling? Because you boys know what's happening at the at the local knowledge can give you a wee bit again, maybe when it first comes to the county, Sean. Oh, definitely. Well, our local knowledge is going to play a big part for us. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and I suppose now, but for maybe for professional bike riders like Tim Wiggins and all them, they've raced on all sorts of ro- roads. You know, I mean, like so. As Ronan said, though that 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 road from uh, Bunkana to Dunlow when we go for Nakala and into uh, over the Fanner Bridge if the wind's blowing like it was today like there's going to be cross ones there and it's going to be split to pieces I think from, mm. from Dunlow across, or from the Blaney Bridge across like it's but we're getting a blast I suppose in Donegal this year because they're nearly all on good roads there's no back roads it's all good roads that we're going to be on so it's kind of a bonus to us you know when they, like when we done the when I've done the Ross previous down around Kerry and Clarny and all that it was all back roads you know but we're very lucky that we're going to be on the main road from from Bunkrana to Dunlow there's no back road at all you know and then I suppose when we hit Glenties to head it back over to Donegal Town from Donegal Town back down to RD, I think we're going cross country, and that's probably where it's going to get tricky again because we're all on by roads there, heading back to to RD, back from RD back to Scaries again. So that's going to play a big part again there. Yeah, yeah. There's a huge factor as well that international teams coming from Europe, especially, you're not used to say the road that we ride on or drive on. Yeah. That is a factor as well, and we've also got cat's eyes, which a lot of them wouldn't be used to. So the first few days. There is a lot of crashes now that are caused by both those factors, and again, it's just not knowing our roads. Like yeah, so. and you just have to be very careful too that you have to avoid these crashes because it happens so quick. Well, that's and it, it, can, it can ruin your entire race. The worst nightmare yeah. is you know putting a year's effort into you know trying to do absolutely everything right and maybe crashing on the first day. Yeah. yeah, and that can happen, and yeah. does happen. And does happen. So. Yeah. Well, so it's a huge event, and it's great to see it back in Donegal after a five-year absence. But uh, I'm sure if locals get out onto the side of the road and follow the rash around, around the county, the likes of you boys will get. A we'll get a huge lift of it definitely you know we've, uh, we'll have a lot of local support like and um, it's great we, I know myself personally I get so much support the whole year like you've uh, you, there's a, a couldn't really mention them all now, but there's a lot of people in Foyle Second Club and at home, my parents and my family and all that help me and take me everywhere and that makes a massive difference. And now that'll all be multiplied tenfold next week because mm-hmm. the fact we're both from Donegal, yeah. anybody out in the roads from Donegal, I'd assume, will be supporting us and cheering us on and writing on the roads or having flags or banners or whatever. Like, and that, that really, really does help. Like. Yeah, and I suppose a wee bit more special for you too, Sean, that given that you've put this package together with, with such a a low budget, a limited budget, and, and trying just to get to, to, to the start line. So when you can get out there and, and can compete, when you see everybody that is back to this last number of years, and particularly these last number of weeks, it'll, it'll make it, I suppose, a more sense of achievement on it that, that you're on it. Oh, well, like, you know, I mean, as I say, my, my wife's a school teacher, and my son's in the school, in the local school here, and they're going to be out everywhere on the course, and you have to hand it to the RAS, like, they go through the towns before that, and hand out t-shirts and balloons and banners for all the all the, all the the schools, and we're passing through Letter Kenny, we're passing through a lot of schools, so it's going to be a good, it's going to be a great week, and hopefully mm-hmm. we get the same weather we got in 2012, and, and make it enjoyable for the spectators, like in 2012 when we came over in Memorial, it was like 25 degrees, like it was a, it was a spectacle, like to see yeah. the crowd that was on it though, mm-hmm. so we're like, we've done our best we're, we've we've got the team ready we're ready to go and fingers crossed that we can make it from Dunboy and Castle back to Scaries in one piece yeah, that's my final question to you Sean what, where, where do you want to be at the end of the RAS what's what's your target now for, for this for this RAS target is to as I say starting Dunboy yeah. and Castle and finishing Scaries and get back in one piece because um, I have a holiday to go on <laughs> the following week I'm going to Dubai for a week so I don't want to be going with any broken bones or anything yeah. so. and the bike will be left at home what? <laughs> Everybody's going to be left at home and the runners and everything's going to be left at home. But nah, listen, yeah. I have to, I suppose, thank a few people, like the, the people that's coming out to help me. They're all volunteers and uh, we're going to give it our best shot. Likes of Jason McHugh, Jordan McGinley, um, Sean McBride, Doc O'Donnell, if I've got somebody there, uh, Alan Mealy and I suppose Jason for the for the kit and stuff like yeah. that. So we'll give it our best shot as a, as, as a Donegal team, as a Donegal base team. And we've heard that the RAS is coming back to Donegal for the next two or three years. Yeah. So hopefully we may be able to build on that and maybe get the likes of Ronan on board and get the Carter boys on board and build a proper Donegal County team again and, and have another stab at it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And for you, Ronan, what's what's the, the hopes now for, for the RAS? Where do you want to become the finish um, line? What well, do you want to get out of it? I do have two goals. Uh, we've spoke about the stage one. Um, I'm, I am trying to go for the best overall position I can as well, yeah. um, which is maybe more achievable than a stage one. 
Um, but if we get that stage one, it might not even start the next day. That might just be it done. <laughs> like you know, it might not top that. So yeah, if, if I get it in the first day, you might not even see me in the goal. No, that's you know that's that's the goal for the week is to you know uh, obviously to get around in one piece first and foremost. Yeah. Like and um, that's that's uh, you, to to achieve anything you have to do that to start with. Um, and then stage one and overall is. It's it's the first roster I'm actually coming out and saying those things in in the open that that's what I want to do like so yeah. I'm I'm thinking that well I know I'm 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 ready to achieve those things but you still need a bit of luck so you do you know well, all we can do is first the two years the very best of luck with with the Ross next week and I uh, hope uh, you uh, all your goals um, come as far as both of your respective teams and you get what you want out of the event and all well, fingers crossed that it'll be a, a huge one for for, for the county in particular for you as two boys thanks for coming on. All the best next week in the Ross. Thanks, Thank you.